Hey guys, just the guys. That's not a generic. This is just for the guys. If you're a, a young man of 13 or an old man like I am, I have some a question for you. Have you bought your lady a Christmas present? Well, have you? Um, well, just in case you haven't bought it, I've got some advice. Some sage wisdom. I found it uh, on television because a week or so ago, I saw that they had done a national survey. And they had come up with the five things that no woman wants to receive for Christmas. <laughs> At the top of that list was a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> The second on that list was a diet book. That's, that's dangerous. Um, the third one on the list was a steam iron. You still with me? Number four, a crock pot. And number five was a toaster oven. After our 8.45 service this morning, when I shared that information with the congregation, one of the women came up to me after and said, don't give a woman anything that plugs in. Okay? So, if you guys who've already bought your lady something for Christmas and it's been one of those five, take it back. Nobody's going to get hurt. If you haven't bought it, don't get it. Go get something else. Because if she is expecting a he went to Jared moment, <laughs> these things that plug in are just not going to cut it. Because expectations are important even if you get what you need. If you don't get what you expect, it can be a problem. I, I remember, you know, growing up as a kid, one of the things that I liked to do was go into the living room where the Christmas tree was and sort through all those packages till I found ones with my name on it. And then I would kind of pull those out and try to guess what was in them. You know, you'd shake them side to side, and you can tell by the heft of them, you know, what could this be that was on my Christmas list? And you just imagine all of these great things that could be in that box and what you were expecting to get for Christmas. And then you get to Christmas morning and you get to tear that wrapping paper off. And inside of that box would be socks and underwear. <laughs> what kid wants socks and underwear? Needed, yes. Expected, not Really, that's not what I expected that I would get. <laughs> Crashing expectations can cause us some real problems. I graduated from seminary. This is really dating myself. I graduated from seminary in 1982. And I was assigned into my very first church. And I had great expectations, and so did they. My expectation was that with all of this education that I had gotten at the premier seminary of the world, y'all know where that is, right? It's in Durham, called Duke. Now, for some reason, the people at Candler at Emory and all these other places, they don't agree with that, but what do they know? They went there. I, I came out thinking, I am going to rescue the world and I'm going to go into this small church in Newberry and I'm they're just going to think Jesus came again they're just going to be so excited and everything that I suggest they're going to be right ready to do yes pastor we're just ready to do that we can hardly wait yes and I thought every one of those folks was going to be loving and caring that every one of those were going to be embracing us and I thought they, they won't ever argue with each other. I mean, they're all Christians, right? So they don't get into disputes. They're, they're not going to argue over who moved stuff out of the kitchen cabinets in the 
in the church kitchen and put it in another room. They're not going to argue about things like that, or at least that was my expectation. And what they expected to get was somebody that came in there with a lot of fresh ideas and that really could preach great sermons. And what they wound up with was me. And with all of those expectations, you know what I, I found out, what I got when I got there? People just like you. I mean, I'm sorry, but we're just folks, right? They didn't get what they expected. I didn't get what I expected. And those crashing expectations didn't go together too well. I've since said about them that they're saintly people because they put up with this green, smart aleck <laughs> preacher, fresh out of school, and they put up with me for a long time and kept asking me to come back. And I kept thinking, well, they'll get better. But they just like me and like you, just folks. When your expectations don't meet up with reality, disappointment, disillusionment can set in. Even if what you're getting is what you need, Do any of y'all know about this experiment of preaching to the felt needs of the people? Is, is that a phrase that kind of resonates with anybody? Yes or no? No. Good. Well, see, that means you just don't read these preacher books that I read and you don't go to the seminars and things that I go to because they're telling us now how to preach good sermons. You would think we'd learn after a while. But they... One of the things that they're telling us now is that, that you need to preach to the felt needs of the people. And a lot of churches are doing that. They're, they're trying to perceive what is it that the people want to hear. And then I can preach that and everybody will feel happy and feel good. And, and we can all say, yay, what a great experience. The problem with that is what you need and what you think you need might be two entirely different things. What you expect... And what you receive might be in conflict. But you're not the first ones to experience this. We can go a long way back. As a matter of fact, we're going to go back to the Gospel of Matthew in the 11th chapter. And we're going to see a, a story about Jesus' cousin, whose name was John. We call him John the Baptist. And about Jesus. Now let me give you a little setup to this. When Jesus went to the Jordan River to be baptized, it was his cousin John who baptized him. And his cousin John had said to the people gathered there that there is someone coming one of these days and I'm not even fit to help him tie his sandals. I'm not, as, I'm not worthy. He even said to Jesus that day, you should be baptizing me instead of the other way around. Because he pointed to Jesus and said to the crowd, Behold, the Lamb of God. See? That's the Lamb of God. That's the one we've been waiting for. Okay, you got that? So now, a few chapters later, and many years after, well, approximately three, here comes Jesus and John in their relationship again. Listen to what happened. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to Jesus, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. 
What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. Truly I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist, yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The word of God for the people of God. John was locked up in a prison cell. John had been going around all through the area preaching repentance. He had been telling people, repent, which just means turn around and go back towards God. Repent of the way you're going. Go back towards God. Repent and be baptized. That was the content of his message. He'd irritated a lot of people because he had called those that were religious folks, he had referred to them as a brood of snakes. Jesus would do that later as well. But John had said, you're just a, a bunch of vipers. And as a consequence of his preaching, John had wound up in prison. Now, he had been living the life that he'd been called to live. He'd been faithful to the mission that he'd been given. He had been doing exactly what he'd been told to do. And for that, he gets locked up in jail. And this is the last time he's going to be locked up because before he's released... Herod has his head cut off. And I can imagine that John was seeing the writing on the wall. He was seeing what's going to happen. Is I'm not going to make it out of here. And I've been doing everything that I should have been doing. Why am I suffering like this? So this faithful one who had years before pointed to Jesus and said, That's the one. He is the Lamb of God. I'm not fit to tie his shoelaces. I am. He should be baptizing me, not the other way around. That's the one I've been waiting for. It was that John who now was having second thoughts. Now that he was in the mess he was in, he was saying, is it really the one that we've been hoping for? All right, now put yourself in John's place. And you probably can. You've been faithful. <laughs> I mean, you've, you've been to church. You've tried to be nice to folks. You've tried to live a pretty good life. And now you might find yourself in some kind of prison. That prison might be one that health is a problem. Or you've got... Uh, I got children. Lord, why didn't I drown some of them when they were born? Uh-oh, I didn't say that with my out loud voice um, your children aren't doing what you think your children ought to do. Anybody have that problem? You don't even have to raise your hand. Do you? And you, you think, but, but Lord, I've been doing everything you told me to do. Why is it that I'm in this mess? Are you the one that I've been waiting for? Or should I wait for another? And a lot of people are asking that question because they're going out seeking for something else. They want to... Are you the one? They're going out looking in all kinds of avenues and all kinds of spiritualities. I mean, you can see this on television. You read about it in the news. People who are seeking some other path to, to whatever there is, it is they're looking for. They're wanting to find something that will make, make their life have meaning and purpose. And they're wandering all over the place. And they may even seek it in drugs and alcohol and they may seek it in a whole lot of different ways, but they're still asking that question. Are, are you the one? Or should we wait for another? And did you hear the answer that Jesus gave? Jesus can be so exasperating sometimes. I, I don't know about you, but I get frustrated with Jesus. I wish he'd give me a direct, straight answer once in a while. Is this the path I'm supposed to take, Jesus? Yep, that's it. Or no, nope, that's not it. Wouldn't that be great? You just, you've got these various options going on in your life and you think, well, should I do this or should I do this or should I do this? Jesus, which one should it be? And Jesus said, okay, door number two. That's the one you should take. 
But Jesus doesn't always do that. And as a matter of fact, almost never. Look what he said to John. He didn't give a straight answer. Yes, I'm the one you've been waiting for. You don't need to wait for anybody else. He said, you go back to John and you tell him. The blind see, the lame walk, the deaf hear, the hungry are fed, the homeless are housed, sins are forgiven. The list could go on. You just go tell John that. In other words, he said, go tell John to see what I do. Who I am is affirmed by what I do, not just what I say, but by my actions. You go tell him to see for himself what is happening and then let him decide. Maybe that's the same thing that he's saying to us. Watch what I do and go and do the same thing. I have a question for you today. Often the church is referred to as the body of Christ, right? Yeah, right? We do that sometimes in the communion liturgy, particularly in our traditional services. We will say things like, we are the body of Christ redeemed by His blood so that we may be for the world the body of Christ. Okay, We're the body of Christ. What does that mean? It's a way for us to understand ourselves that we are, until Jesus returns again, we are Christ for the world. What if, just imagine, what if the world is looking at the church and asking the same question that John, Baptist, John the Baptist sent his disciples to ask? Are you the one that we've been waiting for? Or should we be looking for another? Church, are you the Jesus that we've been waiting for? And you think, well, you know, I'm not perfect. But that's not the point. Are you doing what Jesus would do? Are we feeding the hungry and housing the homeless and caring for the weak, for the oppressed, for the ones that are on the outside? Are we inviting people that nobody else wants? Are we loving people that nobody else will love? Are we telling people that you are worthy because God has made you? You are created in God's image. Are we even standing on the battlefield with our supposed enemies on the other side and looking into the face of that person that some would say is our enemy and saying, in that face, I see the image of God that God has created and put there. Are we who the world's been waiting for? If the world is to be one and to be called for Christ, the church, the body of Christ, has to exhibit the same kind of behavior that Jesus exhibited. Do you wonder, I sometimes do, do you wonder why so many people seem to avoid the church well, do you? There are sometimes I'm, I'm going to be really true confessing today. There are sometimes that I wonder why in the world do I go to church? Well, for one thing, you pay me to come. <laughs> but if I were not the preacher, would I be here? Would I see in you folks the image of Jesus? That even when I mess up, even when I fall down, even when I'm not following the way, you're still going to say, I love you, and I'm going to take care of you. What if, just imagine, we are what the world is waiting for. That people will come to Jesus by what we do. What are we waiting for? We are the people, the body of Christ, and the world needs us. So, what are we going to do?